Nah, yeah, we, we gotta know this man got to meet. Yeah, we gotta know. So, like, what was your process like, like from beginning to end, like that? Even that starting off before the beat, like that piece right there, like what made you come up with that? Shit, my dude, Rock, he already had the sample picked out. I pulled up, yeah, he had the sample laid out. Did the record in like thirty minutes. He shot the beat, he knocked it out. What type? What type of mode was you when you was on? You was on some turn up shit, or you was feeling some type of way, or what it was? Turn up. Okay. So what happened when you when you heard it for the first time with Meek on there? Turn. Yeah. Turn. He bodied it. He went in. He definitely went in. You knew what he was about to do with it. That it was going on the project. Uh. Had an idea, you know, we didn't know the direction really. We just, you know, we did it, sent it out to him. We knew he had the record from there, so at that point it was just like, you know, waiting on the album drop. Oh, shit. So right now, I know what's going on, man. Cooking Beast, man. We're in here with MP. Oh, yeah. What's going on with you? Working, man. Working. Trying to get my credit. A lot of people try to count me out, but you know. You gotta you just gotta stay at their neck. Oh yeah, you know exactly. Mean? It's hard being hungry. Yeah, exactly. So let them, let them know what what made you start producing in the first place. Uh, man, I used to hear shit on the radio and just be like, it went from me just listening to records on the radio to me wanting to you know make the shit that people listen to. So I'm just like, you know what? I started on like a, a fucking. Yamaha keyboard my grandma got me, man, and I would just start playing little tunes on it, and then from there, I would try to play shit I hear. Mm -hmm. I started, I, I picked up the drums, started playing drums, and shit, just really staying focused, staying at it, like, you know, I think I've been, I've been, I've been making beats since I was, what, 13, 14, okay. I'm 27 now, so I mean, you know, I'm just now getting to where I need to be at, and I'm still not really where I need to be at, so sure. it's a long process, but... Focus, you'll get there. So did you did you have any influences? Like you said you've been doing it for a while, but then did you see like these certain producers that made you like even want to go harder? Yeah, man. I think my favorite producer, um, or producers, I look I like a lot of I like Manny Fresh, I like the way he do his drums, I like um Kanye, uh Mike Dean a lot, man. I listen to Every genre, so it's like I try to take a piece from every genre and, and then format it you know, to my own shit, my own sound. So, I, you know, at this point, it's like the sky's the limit. So, so what it what it what it takes for you to to get in, in your zone? Like you start the concept at the crib, and then yeah, I mean, just everyday life. I get motivated by life. Like, you know, I might I might just be riding. And or driving and just see some shit or some colors and you know it'll motivate me it'll, it'll spark something and then it'll take me in a whole different direction what's, what's your program of choice? Fruity Loops I've been on I've been on FL since FL3 I'm shit I'm on 10 now so uh, FL you know 3D keyboard that's that's it man I get, I get the job done the last couple of times I did see you, you know, people was coming to you for the drums. What what makes oh, yeah, your drums so unique? I used to play drums, man, like growing up. So I think playing live drums kind of translates to you know doing it, you know digital. But um, yeah, the drums that's the heartbeat, you know, on the record. So you know, the drums gotta knock, your snares gotta slap. For people who are not familiar with your work, what's some of like the latest music that you um, put out? Uh, I produce Meek Mill on the regular, T.I. Meek Mill, Ra Ra Quavo, Black Man. I did the Future Seven Rings record. Uh, I did the Juicy J, Tyler the Sign, You and I. Um, shit, Juicy J, Wiz Khalifa, and uh, Leon Payne. 
uh, you. Uh, shit, man. Um, it's a lot of, I forget. It's yeah, I forget. That's, that's, that's a mean list it. right there, though. I did it, uh, what is the, uh, Gucci and Cat 1, 2 Hub huh, Boy. Um, shit. Some old thug records, uh, Dead For Real. I did that. You remember, you remember your first feature? First feature, man. Matter of fact, my first, um, my first, my first record was, uh, Lil Boosie. I was in high school still, man. Okay. Southside Superstar. Yeah, that was like 2008. And then after that, I, I did a couple records with Shawty Low. I did like, I did like two or three with him. I came out around that same time. And then from there, she was, uh, a little hot. Um. That's the home. Yeah, yeah. Remember the what was the uh, first first beat you got a piece of change from? Man, uh, like on a on a on a large scale, shoot, I would probably say uh, the Future Seven Rings record, like, really. Okay. Future Seven Rings, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, cause you know, like mixtape records, it's like shit, you know, it's free promo, really. Right. You get your name out there, but if you want to see the big check, you gotta get on them albums. Gotta get up on the album. Let me ask you now with the way the music game changed, a lot of people putting their mixtapes on the streaming apps. Is that, is, that, is that a big plus for producers or is it just a trash? Um, streaming, man, it's kind of hard because when you, when you do the math, it takes a ton of streams to, to get money. So, I mean, the internet, I mean, it, it, it kind of fucked things up, but at the same time, it make it, you know, it's easier, but, yeah, with that, with that streaming shit, you know, you got some artists, they'll put out a mixtape for, on, on, um, for free, and then they'll put it out for, for paid, so, you know, either it's, way it goes. It's hard for the producer yeah, to keep keep right. counting what's going on. Right, just make sure you handle your business, though, you know. You gotta make sure the business is right. Split sheets come in handy, you know, you got producers come in, you might, you might have, like, five producers on one record, walk away with no splits. It's like, you know, how we gonna get paid off the record? You know, Atlanta is big for that type of shit. Yeah. So it's like, shit, man, be careful. Be careful who you work with. 